Azure Stack Hub provides services. Again, note 30 to 35% of the exam objectives. Let's talk briefly about some of the topics covered in this. There is a lot. We will provide resource links uh, that are based on Thomas Moore's blog that will take you to the docs. So you definitely want to look at both the exam objectives as well as those links that Thomas has provided and that we have referenced in the slide deck and video overview. But just some things off the top here. We have topics covering the marketplace, disconnected environments, uh, offer app services, which there are a few new app services to consider versus what have been traditionally. Traditionally, we had the web apps and SQL service pro resource provider as well as MySQL, but there's some new ones that we need to look at, such as, for example, event hubs, uh, updating the services, rotating secrets and certificates, uh, creating and managing plans and offers, set up usage data reporting and using the usage API. And finally, topics on usage and billing in multi-tenant and CSP scenarios. So that's just a sprinkling of them all. Again, double check AZ, aka.ms slash AZ-600 for all of the objectives. Here we go. As a cloud operator, you can download items to Azure Stack Hub from the marketplace and make them available to all users in the Azure Stack Hub environment. The items that you can choose from a curated list of Azure Marketplace items that are pre-tested and supported to work with the Azure Stack Hub all come from the internet of, from Azure. Additionally, items are frequently added to this list, so you have to continually check back for new content that may have been added. When Azure Stack Hub is disconnected, you have to sideload the marketplace items. This scenario uses PowerShell. So you have to go somewhere where there's a good internet connectivity and download those items onto a hard drive, then bring them back to your system to import them in. It's definitely something you will need to do as an Azure Stack Hub operator on a disconnected system. When you run the marketplace syndication with PowerShell, it's important to have the correct version of PowerShell and the specific Azure Stack PowerShell modules installed. Make sure you check out the prerequisites section of this link to review you have everything needed. You will need to know your Azure Active Directory tenant name and those credentials to use the connect-az account command. See the examples in this link for your studying. To create a custom Azure Stack Hub Marketplace item, you use the Azure Gallery Packager tool, which enables you to create a custom Azure Gallery package that you can upload to the Azure Stack Hub Marketplace, which then can be downloaded by your users. The deployment process uses an Azure Resource Manager template or ARM template. As shown in this link, there are values in the manifest file that you will update based upon what was used when you uploaded your custom image into the Platform Image Repository or PIR. In particular, the values you need to note are the publisher, offer, SKU, and version values. When you think about managing the lifecycle for Azure Stack Hub Marketplace items, think about everything you have from nothing to add your items, the items that need to be updated, and maybe eventually removed. The FAQ document here is a good one to review for your studies. Also, as you click on all of those links, walk through and note the table of contents as shown on the right for other considerations in managing this lifecycle. Did I mention that there is some reading for your homework? Hopefully these resources get you to what you need to study faster than without this help. That is my goal, to save you time and accelerate your learning. Also note the YouTube link, which has more in-depth overview of the Azure Stack Marketplace as we described earlier in the videos. This was produced by Microsoft Engineering along with Microsoft services folks from the field with hands-on experience. 
So watch out for these icons as we mentioned moving forward. In each case, I will match the videos to the study topic we are discussing. To set up a production ready deployment of Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub, you must plan for the capacity you expect the system to support. Note that depending if you are connected or not, there will be some different guidance in the link provided. For each of the app service roles, it is recommended to have a minimum of two instances. Make sure to review this link because also depending on the role, there are some other guidelines. For example, with the worker tiers, for high availability, you should have at least four web worker roles, two for shared website mode, and two for each dedicated worker tier you plan to offer. The shared and dedicated compute modes provide different levels of service to tenants. You might need more web workers if many of your customers are using dedicated compute mode worker tiers, which are resource intensive, or running in shared compute mode. Additionally, to provide Azure functions to users in the consumption plan model, you must deploy shared web workers. This article link also discusses considerations for dedicated workers during upgrade and maintenance and planning for the file server role. So make sure you check those out. Before you deploy an app services resource provider, there are many prerequisites to consider and they are the key to a successful deployment. Three initial prerequisites to review and know are one, registration of your Azure Stack Hub. Two, marketplace management, which we covered in the previous topic. And three, updating your Azure Active Directory home directory, which is relatively new. Know how to do these three things. Other callouts in the prerequisites link are knowing about what types of certificates are needed and also the requirements and preparation of both the file server and SQL servers that are used for app services. Finally, there are network and identity considerations. For example, how do you create a service principle for Azure Active Directory and for ADFS in the disconnected scenarios? If you don't know these things already, make sure you review the prerequisites link. After the prerequisites are covered, the deployment can vary depending on if it's disconnected or connected. This will give users the ability to create web, API, and Azure Functions applications. To deploy Azure App Service in an offline environment, first create an offline installation package on a machine that's connected to the internet. Likewise, in a connected deployment, there will be many fields to populate. Make sure you are familiar with what those options are in all of the screenshots as shown in the Deploy App Services link. One important post-deployment step is to note is a possible NSG or Network Security Group that may need to be configured for the file server. If you've never done that, please review that at the end of the same article. Again on this link, you would want to walk through the screenshots. Another call out to note is the connection method you wish to use, credential or service principle. Review the considerations and differences depending on the authentication method used and the subscription rights required. The four things to review on this link are the updating of the following. Encryption keys used within Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub. Database connection credentials used by Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub to interact with the hosting and metering databases. Certificates used by Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub to secure endpoints and rotation of identity application certificates in Azure Active Directory or in Azure or in Active Directory Federation Services or ADFS. And fourth, system credentials for Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub infrastructure roles. Azure App Services on Azure Stack Hub supports free and shared worker tiers by default. To add other worker tiers, you need to add more worker roles. Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub deploys all roles using virtual machine scale sets and as such takes advantage of the scaling capabilities of this workload. Therefore, all scaling of the worker tiers is done via the App Service admin. 
Azure App Service on Azure Stack Hub has four main components to consider when planning for disaster recovery. One, the resource provider infrastructure, server roles, worker, worker tiers, and so on. Two, the app service secrets. Three, the app service SQL server hosting and metering databases. Four, the app service user workload content stored in the app service file share. Make sure to review these links to understand what parts can be done in the portal versus in PowerShell. Also note that App Service for Azure Stack Hub doesn't support restoring tenant user apps or data other than file share content. All other data must be backed up and recovered outside of Azure St Service backup and restore operations. If Azure Stack Hub storage was used for function app storage, review the documented steps to use an additional storage account to recover lost data. As an Azure Stack Hub operator, you manage your Azure Stack Hub capacity using quotas on resources. You control Event Hub's resource consumption by setting quotas on the maximum number of cores used by Event Hub clusters. Event Hub clusters are created by users when they deploy an Event Hub's resource. There are also various resource consumption requirements for the resource provider, which are covered in this link to this article. To understand capacity consumption of Event Hub's deployments, it's important to note that users create Event Hub's clusters based on capacity units or CUs. They don't specify a CPU core count when creating an Event Hub's cluster. However, every CU directly maps to a specific number of cores consumed. The total capacity consumed by the Event Hub's service includes resource consumption by the resource provider and consumption by user-created clusters. Within the link to this article, it walks through an example calculation. Take note of the VM types for the clusters and resource provider. All Event Hub's clusters use a D11 V2 VM type for their nodes. A D11 V2 VM type consists of two cores. So one CU Event Hub's cluster uses five D11 V2 VMs, which translates into 10 cores used. In determining the number of cores to configure for a quota, use a multiple of the total cores used by one CU. The resource consumption by the Event Hub's resource provider is constant and independent of the number of sizes of clusters created by users. The following table shows the core utilization by the Event Hub resource provider on Azure Stack Hub and the approximate resource consumption by other resources. The Event Hub's resource provider uses a D2v2 VM type for its deployment. If a resource provider has already been installed, the following prerequisites may have likely been completed already, but regardless, these steps must be completed and are known as common prerequisites. One, you have to register your Azure Stack Hub instance with Azure. Two, marketplace syndication must have been completed. Three, the Azure Active Directory home directory must be updated. And then next, the public key infrastructure SSL certificates for event hubs must be procured. Review this link doc to know the specifics for the SAN naming convention. Before you can install Event Hubs on Azure Stack Hub, you must download the resource provider and its dependent packages using the Marketplace Management feature. For a disconnected or partially connected scenario, you download the packages to your local machine, then import them into your Azure Stack Hub Marketplace. Before users can deploy Event Hubs resources, you must create one or more plans, offers, and subscriptions. Resource providers installed from Marketplace will require regular servicing. Servicing is done by applying service updates provided by Microsoft on a regular basis. Updates can include both new features and fixes. Thus, the resource providers are updated using the same update feature that is used to apply Azure Stack Hub updates. Assuming you have these prerequisites in place, then create or renew the TLS certificate for securing the value add resource provider endpoint. Review the three steps in this link for how to prepare a new TLS certificate. 
Finally, determine the resource provider's latest deployment properties and use them to complete the secret rotation process. With an elevated PowerShell console, you can determine the properties required to rotate the resource provider's secrets. Use the set-azs product secret commandlet to import your new certificate to Key Vault, which will then be used by the rotation process.